it's as if it is leased, really, mm -hmm. as opposed to being owned. Which is better? Which is the better way to go? What are some of the advantages there mm. where the land belongs to the state mm -hmm. and where land belongs to individuals? Okay, um, um, Shaka, the declaration on land and through the framework and guidelines, I think African governments and states, they decided that the conversation about how they govern the land is really left to a country. Mm -hmm. So countries can have a conversation and ideally should have a conversation with their people mm -hmm. about how they govern their land, what kind of system they are going to have. Mm -hmm. But whether, they, whether the, the land is vested in a president, land is vested in the people, mm -hmm. we have customary systems, I think it's about recognizing that this land is held in trust right. for the people. Right. So not getting bogged down in the fact that some states own land or don't own land. Responding, for instance, to Mohammed from Liberia. Mm -hmm. They have a new land policy in Liberia, which has recognized the value of securing land rights for women. Mm -hmm. And what remains now, yes, they have the commissions, is really in terms of the governance systems to allow for that to happen. Mm -hmm. So we move from, yes, the policy discussion and go down to actually how you manage these lands. Yes, titling, but also titling can be expensive. So getting that title, sometimes it can take three years for you to get a title, you know that. Mm -hmm. So it's about looking for tools that can allow us to secure land rights. And we have examples in Ethiopia. They have land certificates where you can secure, it's not ownership, right. but it is use rights of land. Right, right. Uh, we have several countries experimenting with certification where instead of, you, instead of costing 300 so dollars for you to do that, mm -hmm. it can cost you $5. Right. So I think it's experimenting with different systems. And then also understanding that even when that title is available, it's not a panacea. Right. So you can have a title and still not have access to credit because the title itself and going to credit is another system. So it's not just the land ministry dealing with this. Mm -hmm. It's contextualizing it within the whole development within the country, the planning system, the financial markets, how you facilitate access, how you decentralize banking systems mm -hmm. and how you facilitate that. So I think it's, it has to be addressed in, in, a, in a broader context. How do you respond, uh, Daudi, that... Uh in a lot of African countries, the ordinary African citizen or subject, really, in terms of the way they are treated, is not really represented, that their interests are not represented, that yes, you do have members of parliament like you, Daudi Migireko, you probably do a better job than others, but that in fact, for the most part, you end up reflecting or representing the interests of people like you, the middle class, the elite. No, but uh, when you are a member of parliament, and you, are, you belong to a government that must periodically seek renewal of term of office, mm -hmm. you cannot run away from addressing the interests of the majority of the people. Yeah, but it depends the on the majority. type of elections that you are talking about, because to be honest with you, <coughs> out of 54 member countries of the African Union, mm -hmm. the data I have seen, I cannot give you more than 15 countries where real or genuine elections are held. Most well, elections I, are, you know, seem to be Sh fake. Shaka, Shaka, you and I come from Uganda, and we have been used to having free and fair elections held regularly. Every after five years, you have an election. That is debatable. And, the only and, thing and that and I, I can agree with... I can tell you one thing. Yeah. If I do not serve my people, if my government does not serve its people, mm -hmm. I can tell you when we go to the polls, the, the people will pass their verdict. Over us. The only thing so I can agree is that you hold thing, periodic elections. Whether no, no, they are free I, and fair is I, another issue. But I can also assure mm. you mm. that uh, we, ha we have always had free and fair elections in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And that is how I find myself here as a member of parliament and as a minister. Just one comment, please, if you don't mind, uh, uh, Joanne. We can't finish this program without talking about Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Zimbabwe? What is happening now? It looks like uh, things are happening in Zimbabwe. Uh, considering the history of wearing buyer, wearing seller, and you know what uh, President Robert Gabriel Mugabe did back in 2000. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's frustration. There's frustration with a lot of countries like Zimbabwe, like even Southern Africa. We highlight Zimbabwe a lot. Right. But there are a lot of lessons we can learn from the other countries that have gone through a tough system of colonialization. Namibia, South Africa, they, itself, yes, in Botswana, fact, a lot of these countries. Yeah. And all of them are struggling because people fought for land. But the willing buyer, willing seller program may not necessarily work. Like in your country. Yeah. 
So <laughs> in other words, I mean, my country in Kenya, I mean, some resources were provided for people to actually buy land. Right. By the British. Right. When they left. Yeah. I think the same was promised Zimbabwe, to Zimbabwe. In fact, in fact not only promised, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, they did until Tony Blair came into power. Well, yeah, and, and, but they, they are turning the page. They are starting to look at the issue again. Mm -hmm. And they are starting to look, to have a conversation around how do they now put their house in order in terms of policy reforms. And there's still time to do that, and it can be done. It can be done. Yes. You have the last word? Well, 20 seconds. 20 the, seconds, the, please. The, the fact of the matter is that uh, the, the problem of uh, historical injustices in some of our countries, uh, we, under our national land policy, for instance, we believe that uh, once we create a land fund, which mm -hmm. we have virtually created, mm -hmm. and capitalize it, then we can use some of the proceeds from this land fund to be in a position to buy out uh, absentee landlords and pass on the land with registrable interest to the common people who traditionally have lived in these areas. And we believe this could be one of the ways in which to deal with the problem that you have raised. I see. On that note,